Congress just voted on your gun rights and how many of you are going to become a felon in 2023. That's right, the pistol brace rule coming up from House Joint Resolution number 44. We're we'll talking all about it in such detail that you have not seen anywhere else on YouTube. My name's Tom Grieve, former state criminal prosecutor and criminal defense attorney. Guys, let's get into it. <laughs> So on June 13th, 2023, the House of Representatives passed by a vote of 219 to 210, you need 218, a House resolution to disapprove under Chapter 8 of Title 5 of the U.S. Code, that's linked in the description box below, not boring you on those legal details, the ATF's pistol brace rule. This bill comes from Georgia Congressman Andrew Clyde, who is actually an FFL and gun store owner. Now, if you don't know about Andrew Clyde, he's a member of the deeply conservative House Freedom Caucus that consists of about 46 Republicans in the House. He distributed AR-15 pins to be worn by lawmakers in the House to show their support for the Second Amendment this past year, which irked a lot of opponents. So there's a little quick flash about him. So I mentioned that there was 219 in favor, 210 against. We do have some crossover votes. I want to take a moment to cover those. There are three Republicans who did not vote, and I apologize for any name mispronunciations I'm about to do. We have Despacito of New York, Finsad of Minnesota, and Turner of Ohio did not vote. Two Republicans voted no. In other words, they voted against the repeal of the pistol brace rule. One was Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania, not to be confused with our similar fits, different fits, but similar fits from Wisconsin. And we also have Keene of New Jersey. There are two Democrats who voted yes to repeal. We have Golden of Maine and Peltoa of Alaska. It is worth noting that this vote never would have happened without members of the House Freedom Caucus basically rebelling against GOP leadership to force a vote on the resolution that had been introduced back in March. Yes, this resolution is not brand new. It had been actually introduced back in March. A group of 11 conservatives launched a protest on the House floor last week, grinding the House to a stop in response to the debt limit deal struck between Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Joe Biden, as well as their frustration against Republican leadership on how they handled Representatives Clyde's pistol brace bill that had been languishing for some months now, as I already mentioned. Now, Representative Clyde, in a statement published on Twitter, said, quote, let me be unequivocally clear. I was threatened that if I voted against the closed rule to the debt ceiling agreement, it would be very difficult to bring my pistol stabilizing brace bill to the House floor for a vote. We have this now passed the House. What does this mean? And what's next? Let's start with the what's next. So now it's off to the Senate. For those of you who may have flunked eighth grade civics or just plain old don't care, there's 100 senators. Majority is 50 plus one. That's what we call lawyer math, something that I can easily do while on camera. So we're off to the Senate where they need 51 votes. And of course, the Republicans only hold 49 seats compared to 48 by the Democrats. But there are three independents. Again, lawyer math, 49 plus 48, 97 three independents. It is worth noting that all three of the independents are basically Democrats at large, including former presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders, along with Senator Angus King from Maine, as well as Senator Kirsten Sinema from Arizona. Again, my apologies if I mispronounced any of these names. Let's take a quick look at the positions on gun control from each of these individuals. First from Senator King from Maine. On his website, he supports the expansion of background checks while pushing back on so-called assault weapon bans. He does note, which I found interesting, quote, our experience here in Maine demonstrates that widespread gun ownership does not equate to widespread gun crime. We have one of the highest percentages of gun ownership in the country and one of the lowest rates of gun violence, end quote. I would say that bodes well. More on this in a moment. Next, let's turn to the Arizona senior senator, Cinema. She favors gun control measures requiring background checks on gun sales, as well as, according to one website I found, licensing for even firearm possession. I will note that the NRA, remember those guys, gave her a score of 33%, and Gun Owners of America, GOA, gave her a score of 17%. Mm. Next, we have former and seemingly perennial presidential hopeful Senator Bernie Sanders, who, while he may have once been much more pro-Second Amendment, that is no longer the case in 2023. There's no real hope coming here. As a note, and as evidence of this, he actually co-sponsored a bill back in 2019 that would ban not only pistol braces by name, 
but also it would basically reenact the so-called federal assault weapons ban as well as to restrict high capacity magazines of course we call those normal capacity magazines a link for that in the description box below so the gop would need to flip both senators king as well as cinema before the bill has any hope of heading to President Biden's desk, where it will likely promptly die because President Biden has promised a veto. Now, Republicans simply lack the votes to override the presidential veto in, frankly, either the House or the Senate, and they would need both. So realistically, this is going nowhere. So what's the point? Is this just political theater? Is it a waste of time? Well, Yes and no. There's something that's important that's going on here. But before I get to that, guys, if you made it this far in the video, please consider clicking like to show your support, not only for this video and this channel, but also for the Second Amendment, if you've not already done so before. Of course, also please consider clicking subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And as a note, we do special giveaways as well for members. So if you want to support our project, even just takes a couple bucks a month, please also consider clicking that join button, taking a look at our options for membership. Back to the show. Yes, it's pointless insofar as it has no chance of getting through the legislative process successfully, and therefore, if there is going to be a threat against the ATF's pistol brace rule, it's not going to be coming from this, at least not directly. No, however, it's not pointless in that politicians are very good at something. They're good at winning elections. And winning elections... This takes money and votes. Money and votes comes from popularity and adopting key positions on key issues to get those money and votes. So this vote proves one simple thing of nothing else. Professional opinion readers, meaning politicians, believe that this is a critical issue and also an issue that they are willing to put their name to. It is not some kind of fringe nobody really cares, whatever, who cares what's going on when we're talking about tens of millions of Americans becoming felons because they purchased something that the ATF said, go ahead, it's completely fine before they change their mind. Moreover, it may also help some judges, I'll just remind you, who are still weighing the lawsuits, not only in the Fifth Circuit, but elsewhere, just to once again realize that this is not a fringe issue. The Second Amendment is not a fringe issue. Radical civilian dis armament initiatives like this one taken by the ATF, those are the fringe issues and need to be shown both the legal and political door. Thanks again very much for making it this far in the video. Please be sure to click like and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.